What intrigues you most about, about this year's class? You know, it's, uh, it's an intriguing, the draft in general is intriguing. Um, I don't know that this draft is more intriguing than the next um, or the past. Uh, but the process of digging in and trying to figure out who best fits what, what we're trying to be about is a, um, th that, is, that is stimulating. It's why we get up early. It's why we stay late. Um, it's, uh, it's fun. When you look at strengths and weaknesses, I guess, of this class, how would you rank it? From, from years past. Yeah. You know, there's the nature of the draft is to define how strong or weak it is. Um, interestingly, I think that takes care of itself down the road. We all know the 84 class was fantastic, and I think the class of 03 was a great draft class. Um, we're focused on the process, not the outcome. And so we're trying to dig in and figure out who makes sense for us. Um, much more so that than trying to figure out just the overall quality of this draft. Do I think it's a deep draft class? Yes. I think there's opportunities all throughout this draft. But I think that's also the case in every draft. There's a great number of players like Ben Wallace and I think Avery Johnson and Bruce Bowen who went undrafted. There's been all-stars selected in the second round consistently. There's been very good players drafted at 15 and drafted in the 20s. Um, so our focus is not on the draft at whole. Our focus is the process and understanding that there's opportunities every year at every level of the draft. Now, there's been a couple of great guys drafted, like you just said, at that number 15 spot. Steve Nash, Kawhi Leonard, Al Jefferson. You know, when you look at that position, what, what do you think about it? You know, there could be hidden gems or, you know, high quality guys could, could drop down to that spot. Yeah, you always want to pick higher. Um, I think that's just kind of the nature of the draft. Uh, at the same time, I I'm going to sound redundant, but we're genuinely focused on identifying the guys who fit within our culture and our system, and therefore style of play. And so, and then ultimately that's making a decision at 15, but we're not preparing for 15. We're preparing for the draft in whole. There may be an opportunity to move up in the draft. There may be an opportunity to move back in the draft and pick up some additional asset to do so. So I think we're preparing for the scope of it. Um, and, uh, and more than that though, it's, it's clearly trying to identify the best competitors, the best, the most skilled players, um, the players with a high basketball intelligence, players with a high level of unselfishness. Um, that's, you know, these are the things that you hear, whether it's Coach Bud or Danny talk about. Um, this is what we're trying to identify. Well, I know you can't speak to individual players, but how have workouts been going in general so far this summer? The workouts are a great part of the process because it provides us an opportunity to get up close to the players and to interact with them. Um, oftentimes we take them to dinner or lunch or maybe a breakfast. We spend time, we talk with them one-on-one, -on -one, um, and it's a much more kind of informal yet intimate setting. And so that part of the process is always very fun. The actual workout itself, um, we try to do our best to understand that that's a very small component of a much larger evaluation process. And we're only allowed by league rules to have six players on the floor at a time. And because of that, it, I think it can be misleading at times because you're not really playing the game. Um, but it, the workouts are certainly a, a very valuable part of what we're trying to do. I know you're a busy guy, so I'll let you get back to it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And Hawks fans, you can be part of all the action. All you have to do is RSVP for our draft party at Phillips Arena on June 26th at hawks.com slash draft party. We will see you there.